Last year I covered Saudi Arabia's NEOM project, also known as The Line. It's a hotly debated topic with strong opinions about its ethics, its logic, and its potential for success. Regardless, construction has begun on this project, which has somehow gotten even weirder than before. What was once just a strangely shaped city with multiple levels of interaction for living, working, and transportation has become a giant mirrored wall as tall as the Empire State Building with 3D communities and... Are those floating trees? You know your idea is ludicrous when you have to scream in bold letters on your website's homepage, Neom is real. No, really, we're doing this, guys. We're really this crazy. By the way, if you needed more evidence that fossil fuels are on the way out, this is the link that Saudi Arabia is going to to rebrand themselves as a tech center instead of a petrostate. There is this much writing on the wall. Now, I'm as skeptical as the next guy about the viability of this project. Having said that, there's a lot of things that they're trying to do in terms of sustainability and efficiency that I think are pretty interesting, and of course, I would love to see succeed. But it definitely starts a conversation about smart cities and how cities work, how they should work. Um, this whole idea of starting a city from scratch using modern technology and construction, you know, throwing off the old ideas and trying something new. And Neom isn't the only city in the world trying new things. In fact, Japan has several smart cities in the works. Today we're going to talk about one of them. The future is old. No, seriously. By 2050, the proportion of people age 60 and older will have doubled from what it was in 2015. And with any luck, I'll be one of them. Assuming I'll make it. By 2050, one in five people worldwide will be a senior citizen, or close to it, depending on your definition. At the same time, more people are going to be moving into cities. In fact, 70% of the population is expected to live in urban centers. Today, it's closer to 56%. And our cities already have a whole host of problems. Let's start with traffic. In 2022, the average London driver spent 156 hours delayed in traffic. That's time delayed, not just time in traffic. There are actually 11 other cities with drivers that spend over 100 hours stuck in traffic and a lot more cities in the high double digits. This also leads to health concerns from poor air quality. You might remember those pictures showing cleaner air in the cities during the COVID lockdowns? Well, that's all over. The smog is back, y'all. And in major cities, so are its health effects like severe asthma attacks and premature death. Premature death is a is not a good health effect. Add housing, jobs, crime, and sustainability to the list, and it's clear that cities of the future have some challenges to face. Enter smart cities. So Japan has been looking into smart cities for a while now, and for good reason. The percentage of people age 65 and older is one in three. That's actually more than the rest of the world can expect in 30 years. On top of that, Japan's birth rate has been falling steadily. 2022 actually set a record low. More elderly people and fewer people in the younger generation means that Japan is facing a caregiving crisis that's definitely worse than the rest of the world. So, technology to the rescue. Luckily, they've got a lot of it. At CES 2020, Toyota Motor Corporation announced its plans to build what they call the Woven City, a living laboratory for testing smart city technology. The purpose of the Woven City is well-being for all, and that includes the elderly. I'll get into the details of the Woven City in a moment, but the Woven City isn't like the first time an idea like this has been tried in Japan. There's actually a lot of projects like this that Japan calls Sustainable Smart Towns, or SSTs. They've been doing this not only for all the reasons that I just mentioned, but also as a kind of a technology incubator for some of their major corporations. Panasonic opened the Fujisawa Sustainable Smart Town to 100 families in 2014. Fujisawa is a city of 439,000 people, so what Panasonic has basically done is create sort of a high-tech neighborhood. That neighborhood is now home to 2,000 people. Uh, Panasonic opened a similar town in 2018 and another in 2022. These three run on renewable energy and have been designed with intergenerational families in mind. Another city called Aizu Wakamatsu is also set to host a smart city prototype. Um, doesn't really look like much right now, basically an office with some security cameras. But a number of Japanese corporations have signed on as investors, including Accenture, Nissan, Epson, a printing firm named Topan Inc., and the University of Aizu. So, yeah, something's going on there. Aizu Wakamatsu, by the way, the home of a famous samurai castle. Wikipedia. And now Toyota has their smart sustainable town in the works. Um, SSTs are actually popular with car manufacturers because they're looking for ways to stay relevant as technology changes. And yeah, Toyota's no exception. Except when it comes to EVs, of course. In December 2019, Toyota's president, Aiko Toyota, released an open letter about the new business model for the company. You can find the link down below, but the TLDR is that Toyota's rebranding itself as a mobility company. It's my goal to transition Toyota from an automobile company to a mobility company. They're focusing on people and using their manufacturing mojo to move bodies, products, and information around. Um, I know the mobility thing sounds vague, but it's all the rage in car companies these days. 
Tesla has used mobility as a blanket term for EV and autonomous driving. Google talks about improving access to mobility with Waymo. Actually, the virtual borders that Waymo works with um, aren't really that different when you think about it from the physical borders being drawn by smart city companies. And in a way, if you think about it, you can make the argument that the whole smart city movement is kind of like a reaction to the virtualization of everyday life. It's kind of like Toyota and these other companies are trying to get us to, you know, actually go outside and breathe the air. Um, you know, technology's made it possible for most of us to do what we want to do electronically, but the meat bags we live in still need to function offline. So how will Toyota's Woven City accomplish this? Well, unlike the Panasonic Sustainable Smart Towns or the Smart Additions to Aizu Wakamatsu, Woven City started from scratch. Sort of. Toyota is building on land that was once the site of the Higashi Fuji plant, where cars were built until 2020. Uh, this is 175 acres, and it's located in Susono, a city of about 51,000 people. And the view was going to be mwah, like every single piece of media I've seen about the Woven City has shown off Mount Fiji, you know, as the, the centerpiece of the whole thing. Uh, Toyota definitely had inspiration in mind when they picked the location. And the people who live there will be able to take in this view from three different pathways. The first will be for autonomous vehicles, the second for pedestrians and small vehicles, and the third for pedestrians only. At CES 2020, the architect of Woven City, Bjark Ingels, uh, described the paths as separate forms of mobility. And the emphasis will be put on pedestrian experiences, so you'll be able to walk through most of the places in the city without ever leaving a park. In fact, the Woven City logo kind of illustrates how, how park-like roads surround a central hub. But there is actually a fourth type of path that most citizens will never even see, and that's the city's logistics path, which will be underground. This way, cargo and goods can be delivered directly to buildings without, you know, taking up space in the streets. And deliveries around town will be shuttled around by autonomous delivery vehicles, so anything you might need can be just delivered to your building in minutes. And because this is Toyota, it's going to be powered, wait for it, by hydrogen. Toyota's just all in on hydrogen. Does hydrogen have Toyota's mother in a basement somewhere? Now, to be fair, at least they're trying to be green about it. Um, Toyota has a deal with a company called Enios to, quote, explore CO2-free hydrogen production and usage. Now, I will say hydrogen fuel cells do have their uses, and there's an argument to be made that it makes more sense in a, in a local ground-up infrastructure where it can be extracted and stored without having to transport it around. And I guess it makes sense to store energy in hydrogen for the times when the sun's not out and the wind doesn't blow. Either way, I mean, it's better than burning fossil fuels, so points, I guess. Now, at this point, you might be thinking, you know, hey, this doesn't sound as dystopian as some of the other smart city projects I've heard of. Let's talk about the food. You know, like I said earlier, Toyota is calling the Woven City a living laboratory, and uh, you know what lives in laboratories? Lab rats. A big part of the Woven City's pitch is a focus on the health of its citizens, so to that end, they've created a special diet for them. And every house has a giant water bottle with a little ball thing at the end of it. Nissan Foods has created a new diet for the Woven City that, quote, allows people to enjoy a complete nutrition meal, in their words. Just in case you were wondering what their plans are for that elderly population. Silent breed is people! All joking aside, they want to build a health platform for their citizens that provides healthy food and health monitoring to prevent and treat diseases. It's like the world's most advanced high-tech life alert. This includes sensors that'll track things like food use, so household robots will keep the refrigerator stocked, and citizens will wear sensors for monitoring their health. All of which is connected to a vast internet of things. Security cameras, air conditioning systems, even those smart fridges I mentioned will be connected. And then artificial intelligence will take all that data and decide what should be done for their residents. Toyota has their own take on the role that AI is going to play. Instead of saying AI, they use the term IA, uh, Intelligence Amplified. This is not a new concept, it's something Toyota's been working on for years. In fact, if you want a preview of what living in the Woven City might be like, um, I'll put a link down in the description. It's a video from the Toyota Research Institute, specifically TRI Robotics. In it, they talk about how robots can help care for the elderly, uh, and keeping them safe, keeping their surroundings secure, and just generally making life easier. And this, of course, is the stated purpose for this entire project. You know, um, regardless of how eh, it might all feel, um, the goal is to automate caregiving so that the children and the grandchildren will have extra time to share, you know, doing the things that really matter. But if you have concerns around privacy, well, you're not alone. Uh, the United Nations Human Rights Office has a lot to say in the subject. One report on a smart city project in South Korea pointed to areas of special concern, including the privacy of health and social security data, privacy for HIV and AIDS positive persons, and privacy in the workplace. And that last one is especially relevant to the Woven City. It's expected that, that many of the residents are going to be Toyota employees and their families. Woven City and smart city projects all around the world are going to have to strike a balance between collecting data and then ensuring the privacy of its citizens. And the fact that a lot of these cities are often built by private corporations and not elected governments is a little disconcerting. 
company towns don't exactly have the best history. All right, so where are things with The Woven City? Well, they broke ground on February 23rd, 2021. Uh, they released a time-lapse video a little bit ago that celebrated the one-year anniversary last year. Mostly just kind of shows dirt being moved around, but it's very high-tech dirt. Toyota hasn't made a completion date public. They also haven't said how much it will all cost, but we do have a clue. Um, Toyota announced plans to issue Woven Planet bonds back in 2021. I'm sure that term doesn't really help with the people that are skeptical of this whole idea. <laughs> we will weave the planet! It's still got some hurdles to clear, but it's expected to fund the Woven City and Toyota's other green projects to the tune of $4.6 billion. Of course, that's peanuts to the total investment being made in smart cities around the world. I talked about Neom earlier, that's a $500 billion project. But there are others. There's 48 hotels in the Red Sea project, for example, that plan to use cutting edge technology, smart digital destination management, and IoT sensors to take care of their guests. And in 2021, the Red Sea project merged with Amala. I think I'm saying that right. It's another multi-billion dollar project with high-tech features. Over here in North America, you've got Peachtree Corners, Georgia. Redevelopment efforts have included the construction of Curiosity Lab, a living laboratory to test intelligent mobility and smart city technology. Why do companies all think that people want to live in a laboratory? By the way, some of these smart town projects don't work out, like Google's Keyside project. Keyside was Google's effort to take a waterfront in Toronto and turn that into a smart neighborhood, uh, but they had to abandon the project in May of 2020. There's an article by Carrie Jacobs in the MIT Technology Review where she talked about the, the culture clash between Toronto and Google. She said, quote, almost every person I spoke to used the word hubris or arrogance to describe the company's attitude. Now, Toyota has made a lot of efforts and made, said a lot of things about putting people first in the woven city, but Google said the same thing about Keyside. Of course, considering that Toyota already owns the land where they're building in the woven city, um, they're probably not gonna run into the same issues that Google did. But we'll probably see the first 100 residents move in in a few years, the total population of 2,000, probably not long after that. But maybe the biggest question, to me anyway, is, um, is this the trend? Are corporate-run smart cities gonna pop up around the world? Because it really wouldn't be a new phenomenon. You know, I mentioned company towns earlier. That was actually kind of the norm until about 100 years ago. The U.S. was just lousy with company towns, especially around mining and logging industries. In Britain, they were called model villages. And some of these places were pretty horrific. I mean, like, if you hate how much control your job has over you now, imagine if they controlled when you eat and sleep, who you hang out with, where you hang out, what you can wear, whether or not you can drink, what kind of music you listen to, and every item you purchase comes from them, and they can charge you whatever they want. Knowing Better has a great video about the history of company towns. I'll link it down below. But essentially, some of these places, they basically ensured that their workers stayed permanently in debt to them, creating a kind of slavery. Now, is it fair to paint the woven city with that brush? Who knows? I guess we'll see. In the best case scenario, Woven City and other smart towns will pioneer new technologies and systems that will filter into all the other cities of the world and make all our lives better. Ideally, you know, maybe in a hundred years, this kind of connectedness will be normal and people will think of how we live now as the wild, wild west. But I guess time will tell. Let me know what you think in the comments. But regardless of whether the Woven City or Neom or any of the other smart cities wind up being the future, you can bet that the future cities will be more connected, more integrated, and definitely much more computerized. And you can take advantage of that trend by having a better understanding of computers, which you can get a handle on with today's sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant has a whole learning path on computer science, starting with computer fundamentals and going all the way up through neural networks. Find out how those ones and zeros become, well, what you're watching right now and how it's advancing into the AI programs that might be putting your job in jeopardy or making it easier. It's a very confusing time which is why it's a good idea to get a better handle on all kinds of things, from computer science to physics to orbital mechanics, which is another growing field. And Brilliant does it in a way that's fun and kind of hacks your brain's problem-solving abilities using interactive animations and games. Especially if you struggle with math and science concepts in school, you might be surprised how this method makes everything kind of click for the first time. It's kind of a magic trick. And if you're one of the first 200 people to sign up for the premium subscription at brilliant.org slash answerswithjoe, you'll get 20% off your annual subscription. And if that's not enough, they offer a 30-day free trial. So give it a try. You've got nothing to lose. Get learning and have fun at the same time. There's all kinds of new stuff over there. So go check it out. Brilliant.org slash answerswithjoe. Links down below. Big thanks to the Patreon supporters and channel members who are helping to keep the lights on around here and forming an awesome community. Uh, I can't thank you guys enough. We've got some new members I need to shout out real quick. We've got Enrique Govea, Roxas Fever, <laughs> Tom Williams, Too Young to Feel This Old, God, I feel that one, uh, Mark Zabo, Stephen Krasner, Instantly Broken, Chris Nicholas, and Kingnack. 
Uh, thank you guys so much. If you'd like to join them, you can get early access to videos, you get to go to some exclusive live streams that nobody else gets to see, and as a member, you get a little icon next to your name in the comments. Kind of makes you stand out. And I try to focus on always responding to members in the comments because you guys are supporting the channel that way. Anyway, if you'd like to join them and be a member, just hit the join button down below this video. Please do like and share this video if you liked it. And if this is your first time here, maybe click on this video. Maybe I'll point to that Neom video that I was talking about earlier. Uh, or look at the sidebar if you're on your browser. Any of those thumbnails down there that have my face on them, go click them out, click them out, check them out, view them if you like them. I do invite you to subscribe. I do come back with videos every Monday. As always, t-shirts, fun t-shirts, and all kinds of other merch are available at answerswithjoe.com slash store. Um, really does help support the channel. And a lot of them, I mean, this one has my logo on it. Maybe you don't want to like have my face on you. I get that. But a lot of them have like really fun, nerdy, geeky things that will help you make friends. People will see it and they'll, they'll get you. They'll get what you're all about. Anyway, answerswithjoe.com slash store. Go check it out. And that's it for now. You guys go out there, have an eye-opening rest of the week. Stay safe. And I'll see you in two weeks. And then we're going to have some surprises coming. So thanks for watching. Love you guys. Take care.